We're turning this Barbie dream house into a screen. <laughs> This iconic pink mansion is Barbie's happy place. So we're gonna add some paint, some props, and some eerie effects, and we're gonna try to turn Barbie's dream into her worst nightmare. Let's get started. First, we're getting rid of all of this happy stuff here. I need that. Is that a little chicken? <gasps> Haunted birthday cake? Yes. Please stop messing up my dollhouse. I'm not afraid of anything. We should definitely make this a spooky teddy bear. Get out of here. Ah! Oh no. Choo choo. Oh no. Did you just break it? Maybe. It's okay, I broke it like six times. <laughs> just getting it home, in the car I broke it. It's so fragile. Hello. Are there any ghosts home? I wanna take this kitchen thing out because I think we should use it, but I'm not sure how to do it. I'm probably gonna break it. Don't break it. Oh my goodness. Oh! oh. Whew. Okay. Let's talk about our plan for the house. We're gonna give it a whole new paint job. We're gonna give it custom floors, like some cool architectural details and lighting and everything. And then in this room up here, we're gonna have Barbie sitting down like summoning demons. We're gonna have a glowing magic circle on the floor. On the ceiling up here, we're gonna have like a Stranger Things portal opening up like an Eddie's trailer with like tendrils coming down, wrapping around stuff. I think we're gonna do some digital effects in the back. And then over here, we're gonna do like a Haunted Mansion style endless hallway with all sorts of lights and cool mirrors and effects and stuff. But to do that we're gonna need to put walls on in a bunch of places so let's build some walls we made the walls from some thin pieces of birch plywood so it'd be super strong they're also really easy to paint so it'll be great for this then we can just super glue them in place we did have to cut some notches here and there to fit around the weird dollhouse stuff but it was no big deal Okay, that was pretty easy. Everything went in smooth and I'm happy with it. I'm gonna add in a ceiling, but I'm gonna do that later, I think. Next, we're gonna paint the whole thing white with a primer so that we can then paint it back to pink. Pink to pink. <laughs> like, it makes sense. We are makeover experts. No, it does not make sense at all. So much sense. We have the house all primed and we added a couple of wall panels in for some architectural interest. We are gonna be adding like baseboard and floors, but that's gonna come later because first we have to paint it pink. We got a lot of different pink paints here. And it turns out Barbie pink is copyright. So we don't have official Barbie pink, but we have a pretty close sample. On our last dollhouse makeover, which is right there, the focus was really on the outside, but this one, I want the focus to be on the inside and what's happening in these scenes. So by painting the exterior of the house gray, I'm hoping it kind of melts away and lets you really focus in on what's happening inside. What you doing over there? I'm making floorboards. I started with popsicle sticks and I cut off the little round ends and then I'm just sanding them a little bit, and bam, miniature floorboards. I just have like a thousand of them to make. <laughs> For the kitchen floor, Jamie first made a paper template and then glued on a piece of scrapbook paper to make it look just like a tile floor. It surprised us how good this looked and it was really easy. We've got some really fun ideas planned for this upper room, but first we gotta put the floor in. We're basically gonna build this like a real floor. We're gonna start at the back and just kind of build the planks all the way out. And once the floor is in there, we can start building the effects. Are you actually curving that wood to fit around that curve there? Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. You know what? It doesn't matter if you're doing a tiny little dollhouse or like a huge project, spend the time to get the details right and it will be appreciated. Now that we've put this beautiful pristine floor in, we wanna mess it up. The wire brush helps give it a little bit of texture and the utility knives for carving in deep grooves and scratches. We're gonna build up the paint in a bunch of different layers and these are just watered down acrylics and we'll keep adding in different washes until we like it. Those. 
I'm using a little bit of a flicking technique, and that just adds dust and grime and stuff like that. Just like on a real house, we're gonna do the baseboards after we do the floors so that everything can be painted separately. It makes it a lot easier. To match the Haunted Mansion hallway, we found a really close replica of the wallpaper pattern, but then we made it pink. I really like the way this like kitchen thing came out, James. Like really, it feels fancy and modern. Yeah. Does it start here and then go down? Oh yeah. Maybe. Well. Oh, I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. Don't break the kitchen. Oh. Did you get it? Yeah. It definitely almost broke though. In that fancy kitchen. Didn't break it. Look at this thing. Ta-da! <laughs> so, so normally our philosophy is make it nice first and change it and add the stuff we want and then ruin it again. <laughs> because that way, instead of going straight to ruined and old, you kind of like, I don't know, it looks more normal. It looks more realistic this way. Mm -hmm. Although this is like the scary part because you've spent all this time making it pristine and beautiful and now you just destroy it. But, but it's also like a really fun part. So looking forward to it. My plan is to have like water stains oozing down the walls and little mold spores and like ghost residue. Ghost residue? Yeah. Is that? I don't know, but we're gonna find out together. Sounds sticky. <laughs> Jane, that looks amazing. Thank you. Yes, it does. While Jamie's been painting, I've been working on all the lights and effects that are gonna go inside the house. Come check it out. This is a chandelier that's gonna go in the haunted hallway that was from the original dream house. We're gonna put all these LEDs in it. These are tiny little skulls that we 3D printed on our resin printer. And look at the look at the crazy detail you can get in this. It's like little teeth, and these are gonna go on the walls and make it super spooky. This stuff is amazing. It's called LED filament, and it's basically like wet spaghetti noodle wire that glows. This is gonna go on the floor upstairs. This is a microfogger. You've seen us use this before in videos. We used it in our big treasure chest. We're gonna use this to add some cool mist and stuff like that inside the house. And finally, we've got these tiny, tiny, tiny little LEDs. And we're gonna use these to make some little candles that are gonna be scattered around, kind of flickering throughout the house. All of this stuff is gonna be powered by the new Arduino Uno R4, which has Wi-Fi, which means we can control the house from like afar and make spooky things happen. To paint the wall sconces, we started by airbrushing the skulls to a bone white, and then the metal parts were carefully painted in aged bronze color. The plastic chandelier got painted the same color. We used a brown wash to dirty up the skulls and then a little bit of dry brushing to bring back the highlights. These things came out amazing. We kind of want to make some life-size ones for our actual house. The upstairs is where all the supernatural spooky stuff is happening, so let's get into that. We're gonna turn this happy little girl into the cursed Samara from The Ring. The first step in her transformation, where you're going to use some writ dye and dye her hair black. We mixed the dye and then soaked her hair, and then we let it sit for over an hour, but once it dried... That's not black hair. What happened? I don't know. The dye didn't stick. We saw Jazza used alcohol ink to dye a Barbie's hair, so we tried that. Much better. Next, we painted little Chelsea a pale, ghostly white, and we made her a creepy little gown. Did you know that TVs used to be giant boxes? It's true, and we modeled this one to look exactly like the one from The Ring. We actually printed out on clear plastic the actual scene from the movie. So now we gotta put all this stuff together. First thing I'm gonna do is put a light in the TV because we want the screen to actually light up. And to do that, we're using EL wire, which is basically glowing wire, it's super cool. Now I've got a few layers to put in for the screen. We're gonna start with a piece of white paper, which kind of diffuses the light. And then after that goes our image. And finally, we've got our piece of acrylic and we've got our own little TV screen. 
This is gonna be the hardest part. I have to attach her to the TV and we really only have one idea, so I'm hoping this works, but it starts with me cutting her legs off, which is super weird. <laughs> We're gonna go full Sid from Toy Story here. And there they go. I have no legs. I lost them in the well. <laughs> so now we have this flat surface and we're gonna glue this to the TV. This is one of those things where if this doesn't work, I have to rebuild this whole TV. So, please work. Last step is to give her that greasy, gross hair that hangs in front of her face. So cool. <laughs> that looks awesome using Sharpie so that we're committed. There's no backing out now. <laughs> now we're gonna take our little LED filament that we showed you before and we're gonna put it in the floor and hopefully the whole floor is gonna glow when we turn it on. I made it just the right size so that this fits in. All right, should we test these lights out? Yes. Oh! That's Look at this. so bright. That is super bright. All right, wait, watch this. Some serious summoning happening in this room. Yeah, there is. Kind of looks like a giant play button. It's not supposed to look like a giant play button. <laughs> I mean, it is for a YouTube video, so, you know, just pressing play <laughs> magically. This is Yoga Barbie. My goal for her is to make her look like she's actually being possessed by a really nasty spirit. Look at that crazy hair. <laughs> I love that she's still wearing like yoga clothes, but they're just all dirty. Yeah, well. It's perfect. <laughs> Do you remember these teeny tiny little LEDs that Jay showed you? I'm gonna make some candles that they can fit into. I already made a couple. These are made out of Sculpey, which is a clay that you bake in the oven to dry. As Adam from North of the Border would say, first I rolled out a wormy dealy. I flattened one end to make the wax drippies and then used a ball tool to make an indentation at the top for the flame. Then I poked a hole for the wires to go through. And after 20 minutes in the oven, we have a bunch of tiny little candles. What's really cool about this stuff is it's semi-transparent, so when you put the LED in, it has this glow, almost like a real candle. The plan for this hallway right here is to do an infinity mirror so it creates like an endless hallway effect from the Haunted Mansion. Now we don't have a lot of space in here though and I'm honestly not entirely sure if this is gonna work but we're gonna cut some acrylic and test it out. So this is a piece of acrylic two-way mirror and we need to cut two pieces of this for the effect. We've got a template made out of cardboard that fits exactly in the hallway so I'm cutting the acrylic to match that. I broke it. Did we buy extra? No. I'm gonna try to glue it back together and maybe our infinity mirror, will have, there'll be a crack in reality or something, I don't know. Glued together patch come out. Uh, it's not great, but it is what it is. On every project, there's like a scar that reminds me of something I screwed up and, and that's this one. Okay, the mirrors are in place. In theory, if we put a light in here, then the light bounces back and forth in between the two mirrors and it creates an infinity effect, which is kind of working. But honestly, I'm not too excited about how this looks. There's just not enough space to like make it cool. That's a shame. We do have a plan B though, which we should try. Jay, give us the update. So we converted it into what's gonna be a bathroom. So now it makes a little more sense. We've got a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, and down here, we finally added some walls and a floor. So there's gonna be some stuff in there too. I think, honestly, I've totally lost track of all that. There's so many little details on this thing. We're just gonna like keep moving forward and hopefully it all comes together. Since we have the two-way acrylic, we decided to build a mirror illusion. Kind of like a miniature version of our haunted mirror project. We 3D printed and painted a mirror frame, glued it in, put in our piece of acrylic, and there you go. The dream house came with some bathroom stuff that luckily fit perfectly in this little room. So we made it gross. Like, really gross. What is this green toxic ooze coming out? There's this thing called Skibbity Toilet, and a bunch of y'all have been asking for it. I'm not gonna claim.
claim to understand exactly what it is, but it's a guy's head coming out of a toilet. So we got Ken, and we're gonna make Skibbity Toilet just for you. Off with your head. Ha. Still not the weirdest thing we've made, but it's up there. It's up there. It's on yeah. the list. Our plan for the kitchen is to recreate a famous scene from the first Scream movie. And for the rest of the kitchen, we're gonna put in a lot of cool, interesting stuff to really make that spooky atmosphere. We need to make this Barbie look like Drew Barrymore's character from Scream, Casey Becker. So first, I'm gonna give her a little haircut. Are you gonna try to give her bangs? I'm gonna try. Are you literally just gonna glue hair to her head? Yes. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Um. Okay, <laughs> Barbie's worst nightmare is a bad hair day. This is just part of the whole thing, right? <laughs> that is a freaking nightmare. <laughs> I don't know what is happening. What have you done? <laughs> I just melted all of her hair by accident. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Let me see this. Well. Don't worry about it, it's fine. To match the scene from Scream, we even made her some delicious Jiffy Pop and a retro white phone. To make Ghostface, I sewed this stylish little black robe, and then we made her a mask and a miniature Buck 120 for, uh, stabbing reasons. So this is that little chandelier that was in the Barbie house, and I built a little LED array, which should go inside this thing and look pretty cool. And there you go, a chandelier. Luckily, there was a lot of places to creatively hide the wiring, so installing these lights was a breeze. Our plan for this room is it's going to be like the nest of the big mama spider. So we're gonna have it covered in spider webs. We'll have a Barbie victim like hanging upside down and a bunch of little baby spiders everywhere. Oh, that's freaky. Sorry, Barbie. <laughs> Ever since Stranger Things came out last year, we really wanted to make a portal to the Upside Down. We actually tried making a life-size one last year, and it's the only project we ever scrapped because it looked it was a disaster. It was so bad. It was not, no, no good at all. So instead, we're gonna build a mini portal to the upside down in our Barbie's greenhouse. We cut a hole in the ceiling and now we need to make like 50 really creepy vines to come out of it. Look at my vines. I made so many. Okay, next we have to base coat these black, give them a little dry brush for texture, and then glue them on the house. To attach these, I'm going to bend it up over like this hole in here, and then hot glue it kind of squiggly-like going down squiggly -like. the- Squiggly-like. <laughs> yes. Technical term. Yes. Going down the, you know, the ceiling and the walls of the, the house. And now we summon the dark forces and put all of these in there. We're so close to done. Here's a quick look at what's going on behind the scenes. This is an iPad that's held on by some clips that we made and on the window in the top floor is gonna be like this crazy effect going on. We've got another iPad here and this is the back of the two-way mirror. So there'll be some cool stuff in the bathroom. And then on top, we've got a little phone that's playing a video for the portal in the ceiling. So obviously we went a little overboard with having two iPads and a phone, but we just kind of wanted to show you like what's possible. Also, this is a really good use for like your old phones and stuff. So when you upgrade and get a new phone, you can do this kind of thing. Then down here, we've got all the wiring for the candles and the lights and all that stuff. It's all coming down and being powered by this Arduino, which is basically like a tiny little computer. It just kind of tells everything what to do. But instead of just having all the lights on, we can actually tell it to like fade in and out and flicker the candles and things like that. So it's super fun. We didn't end up getting to it, but what's really cool about the Arduino R4 is it has Wi-Fi capabilities, which means you can control it from the cloud. I just think that's awesome. Like we could like have this turn on all by itself and totally freak people out. 
Are we finally ready to put all the stuff in and turn the lights on? Yes, but first we have a wicked shout out this week to Alavo and Eloisa who sent us this amazing letter in the mail. Alavo's been making his own spooky creations at home and he even sent us this amazing drawing on how to make our own skeleton from Goodwill. Our favorite thing in the world is getting stuff like this from you guys and seeing what you've been making. So thank you so much. And until next time, stay wicked.